Hello there. My name is Connor Lynch with Westwood Media Center. Today we are excited to sit down with an important figure in Norfolk County's public safety. Jerry McDermott comes to the seat with 30 years of experience, including State Director for Senator Brown, Executive Director of South Shore Habitat for Humanity, and Co-Chair of the Alston Brighton Substance Abuse Task Force. His current charge is as the Norfolk County Sheriff, encapsulating 28 communities in Massachusetts. Jerry, thank you for joining us today. Hey, Connor. Yeah. Delighted to be here. Excellent. Thanks for having me in. Yeah. So uh, we were talking a little bit beforehand, but you've successfully continued a trend of different people coming on the show to interview who have been Catholic Conference people. You went to Catholic Memorial, I went to Catholic Memorial. Yeah. So pretty nice that we get to continue the alumni network even years afterwards. That's so. great. Well, Delighted to be here with a fellow CM Knight. Absolutely. Although you, you're a more recent graduate than I am. <laughs> Just a By little bit. a few bit. years. Yeah. So we wanted to give the uh, audience a little bit of an opportunity to understand who you are, how you came into the role. So if you can just tell me a little bit about who you are and how you became the county sheriff. Great. Well, again, Connor, thanks for having me. Um, so back December 2018, I was appointed by Governor Charlie Baker mm -hmm. uh, to become the Norfolk County Sheriff. And that opening was there because uh, my predecessor, Michael Bellotti, the former sheriff, was there for just about 19, almost 20 years, and he left to become the president of Quincy College. Uh, so there was a special sheriff, Bob Hanez, who did an awesome job as I interim sheriff, um, but the governor had the ability to appoint. Uh, so the governor and I sat down and we talked about probably the hottest topic of the day, which is the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of went back to my days on the Boston City Council and explained to the governor that even back in 2004, when I helped create the Austin Brighton Substance Abuse Task Force, uh, heroin was raging in the city of Boston. In particular, my old district of Austin Brighton, we were seeing a lot of good, good kids, uh, you know, fine families, kids who played sports. They were getting hooked on painkillers. Mm -hmm. Even back then, OxyContin was the issue. It was a common denominator. Uh, so I spoke to the governor about some of the work I did on uh, getting the word out to battling this epidemic and taking the stigma away from mental health and how that parallels with uh, the substance abuse. Uh, so as the governor and I talked, uh, we're sitting here in you know, 2018 over at the State House, and all the issues that we had fought back in 2004 had only grown by then. Mm -hmm. This opioid crisis uh, had just come barreling down the tracks like a freight train, and now it was engulfing the whole country, really. Uh, and we all know the history now with, with Purdue Pharma, and uh, so many states' attorney generals are, are suing them. Um, but anyway, that is really how I came to be appointed sheriff because of the work I'd done on substance abuse and around mental health issues. And I said what the, you know, and the governor concurred is, uh, you know, you can appoint anyone you want to this position. Um, and historically, it's always gone to somebody from law enforcement, you know, who's a retired police officer. Um, but we're not really putting a dent in recidivism rates if we don't address the mental health and substance abuse issues. Uh, so the governor, you know, gave me this great opportunity and appointed me back December 2018. I'm going on my 14 month now, Connor, mm -hmm. uh, and I can tell you it's been great. And um, just as predicted, 80% of the guys that we house and probably close to 90% of the women who are uh, female offenders in Norfolk County, they have a dual diagnosis of um, mental illness and substance abuse. So have you noticed that while you're still being the county sheriff and your focus before was on the task force, obviously, that you've still been able to make a huge impact with your seat as the county sheriff? We sure do. Um, so we're blessed to have a great staff. Um, I've got uh, Joanne Barros and Tara Flynn, our medical and behavioral health folks, as well as great deputy sheriffs. And we not only offer programming inside the walls uh, to the offenders to try to help them get clean and sober, uh, get them the counseling they need so they can get their lives back on track, uh, and go back out into society and be productive. But we've got a robust program for outside of the jail. So we go out to senior centers, we go out to middle schools and high schools, and we really have an educational component. And, and that's where I feel that we're really making a difference. Um, it's very impactful when you go out to a high school. Uh, for example, we were at our old rival, Catholic Memorial's old rival, Zavarian, mm -hmm. and we brought an inmate and a real baby face looking guy. He was actually 26. But if you looked at him, you would have said he's about 20. And you could hear a pin drop in the auditorium at Zavarian because he could relate to the students that were there. And as he spoke to them and he talked about making good choices and staying on track, and he told his story of how he went off track, you could see, on just you could tell on the faces of the young men, he, he was connecting with them yeah. and making a difference. So that's, that's really a, a positive for me and for all of our team is when we can go out and uh, you know, change some hearts and minds about 
going down the wrong track in the first place. Absolutely. And I'm glad to see that Westwood is also a community that can benefit from you being here, not yeah. only just your hometown, but also a yeah. benefit of the Sheriff's Department to have that kind of activism. I see a lot of interaction with your office in the high schools, with the senior centers, yeah. pretty much all over town. And I yeah. think that it benefits a lot. Well, thank you. We're, we're lucky to have um, Chief uh, Jeffrey Silva mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the school resource officer, Officer Pindell, is terrific. Um, I've got two girls up at the Westwood High School, so uh, I, I, you know, I, I get a good flavor of, uh, you know, I hear what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Westwood isn't immune. Uh, Westwood has its share of challenges, too, um, just as all 28 communities in Norfolk County, whether it's a big city like Quincy or it's a quiet, leafy suburb like Dover. Um, mental health is everywhere substance abuse is everywhere and I don't believe there's a family out there who hasn't had a loved one touched by mental illness or some addiction mm -hmm. uh, whether it's alcohol or drugs so I, I like to think we're all in this together um, but one thing we have to do Connor is we have to hit it head-on we have to go meet the challenge and get into not just the high schools but the middle schools and perhaps even younger so that kids are uh, getting partnered with the mental health care providers they need and don't face a stigma because what we've seen is kids who aren't treated um, you know, in third, fourth, fifth grade, by the time those kids get to high school, if they make it to high school, they've been mercilessly bullied. Uh, if, they, if they fall through the cracks and not get that mental health component, now they're self-medicating with drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's where we see some of these horrendous outcomes, whether it's self-harm, uh, you know, teenagers committing suicide, or we see something worse, like a school shooting. Well, I'm glad that you're here to help. Oh, help thank you. Any, yeah. any way, shape, or form. And, and I think it's a, a very big activism on your part, and I think it's had a very big, big effect. And we, and we enjoy it. We love getting out to the schools and inter interfacing yeah. with the kids. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to shift gears just a little bit and go from talking about a little bit of the younger population to a little bit of the older population. Sure. Because a big part about what we're going to be talking about today is senior programs. Yes. So I wonder if you can walk us through just some of the basics of the programs that are offered by the Sheriff's Office. Great. Um, so this is an important topic. Um, Sadly, our seniors are targeted uh, because they are um, probably, you know, at that point in their life where they've got a nest egg, mm -hmm. and folks know that, that they've, ha they've either accumulated some wealth by the time they've retired, or they're on uh, fixed income and they have a, a small nest egg, but the scam artists know that they could um, probably play on a couple of things. One is, sometimes they're lonely, so they'll pick up the phone and they'll talk to just about anybody who calls, right? The other thing, sadly, and I've got a 93-year-old mom, so I know this firsthand, is they may, might be sharp as a tack all day long till about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and they start sundowning, mm -hmm. okay? So if there's any impairment whatsoever, uh, if it's early onset dementia or if it's Alzheimer's or just, you know, as folks age, and my mom's 93, the day. creeps in and they get a little bit confused. Um, so it's easy for these scam artists to try to sneak something past them. So it's, they, they look at the seniors as a, a, a rich target, a vulnerable target, and they'll call with all kinds of scams. They'll call up and pretend that they're calling on behalf of our veterans or police or fire, knowing that our veterans love our police, fire, and veterans, mm -hmm. and of course they'd want to contribute. Um, so it's easy to trick them into donating. Um, the other thing is these scam artists are working outside of the United States. So folks will often ask me, Connor, um, if I'm on the do not call list, why am I getting these calls, all right? So the scam artists don't care about our laws at the federal or state level. And often they're uh, coming from the old Soviet bloc, the old USSR and all those breakaway republics. Mm -hmm. It could be somebody our age just sitting at a keyboard. Yeah. And they've got all the phone numbers programmed in. They hit a button. It calls. And if you've ever noticed, there's a delay when you pick up those um, robocalls. Because it's them hitting the play button. That's right. Yeah. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll hoodwink them into thinking that there's something wrong and they have to donate money right now. Um, there's two big scams going on right now. One is uh, calling up seniors and saying you fail to show up for jury duty. And if you don't pay $900 right now, two sheriff's deputies are on the way to your home and they're gonna arrest you. So the seniors are scared to death, I mean, as anybody would be. Yeah. Uh, there's a fear of being arrested. There's a fear of a penalty and there's a sense of urgency. So they want you to pay that $900. Here's the hook they always ask for an unconventional way to pay. Uh, it's not just get your checkbook and read off the routing number and your uh, checking account number. They want you to go get Visa gift cards or any kind of gift card and read the numbers off the back of the gift card. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like wiring the money to the scam artist and the money's gone. Yeah. This happens all the time. So seniors should be aware um, of, of these types of scams. And we get out to all the councils on aging through the North County Sheriff's Office and we do a senior uh, safe 
uh, program. It's called, you know, uh, scam prevention program for seniors. When we go out there and we ask for a show of hands, Connor, every hand in the auditorium goes up. You know, people say, yeah, that, that's happened to me. Mm -hmm. The other one besides the, um, the bogus call about jury duty is the granny scam or granddad scam. And the way that works is um, these, these scam artists are, are so sophisticated. They'll go on somebody's website. I mentioned I've got two teenage daughters. Mm -hmm. They could go on their social media accounts and with Instagram and um, Facebook, you could tell the name of our golden retriever. You know my mother's name, mm -hmm. when we last visited, and what we had for dinner. There's nothing private. Nothing's private. Kids put everything out there. So the way the scam artists work is they'll get a young accomplice to call and you know call a, a grandmother or grandfather and say, you know, hey, grandmom, it's me, it's it's, it's Shannon. Um, you know, you, you sound different, Shannon. Well, we were in a car accident. My nose is broken. Please don't tell mom and dad. Mm -hmm. I have an attorney, Connor, who I want to put you on the phone to. He's going to bail me out. He's going to take care of all the court fees, but it's going to be eight thousand dollars. But please don't tell mom and dad. Mm -hmm. You have to take. You, you have to do this right now, right? So there's a sense of urgency. Um, the scam artist gets on the phone who pretends to be an attorney, explains there was a car accident, alcohol, there was open containers of alcohol, and that he can make all these problems go away for your granddaughter. Just 8000 You just have to pay the money. People fall for it. They go one step further. They'll say, uh, you can think about it and call me back at this number. Mm -hmm. So now the fake attorney gives out a, a phone number, which has a very kind secretary in her 40s, 50s, or 60s, who answers the phone and says, you know, this is the law firm of... Sullivan, Sullivan, and Sullivan, or whatever mm -hmm. it is, and all of a sudden, it, the senior, the uh, that grandparent says, "Well, it must be legitimate." Yeah. They answer the phone as a law firm. It sounded like my niece or my granddaughter. That's all the validation That's that they all the validation, need. and they want to help. Mm -hmm. They want to get their grandson or granddaughter out of trouble. They do a variation of that where they say, um, "You know, granddad, I was away in Mexico with my friends. We were drinking. We were arrested by the police. We're in we're in prison in Mexico. Don't know what's going to happen." please, you got to wire the money to get me out and don't tell mom and dad. Mm -hmm. So again, there's that sense of urgency. Um, and again, they often ask them to pay by going to get gift cards. Um, that's a real tell. Yeah. Not long ago, Connor, there was an incident in Quincy where an astute taxi cab driver had picked up a fare, driven her to the store where she bought a stack of gift cards. She went back home. Nobody picked up on it except for that cab driver heard the same address and he said, I just had a fare at that address. And he notified the police and they intervened. Wow. And they saved that woman from losing about $4,500. So that's, that's why it's so important to get out with the seniors, go out to the councils on aging, and just ask them, have that open dialogue and say, don't be ashamed. Other people have been scammed. Yeah. This is what's going on and you need to protect yourself. And I think scams like that, you know, we're talking about, you know, an elderly population. You're looking at the people who are 70s, 80s, 90s, yeah. but this can also work for, for anybody. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've got a quick story that's uh, rel relevant to uh, Westwood. Mm -hmm. A school teacher who lives just down the street from us uh, also is a math tutor on the side, and she got hoodwinked via email. Somebody said they were moving to Westwood, and that, you know, we'll say their son was Johnny, and Johnny was going to need so many hours of math tutoring at, at, you know, whatever the hourly rate was, and they were going to send a check and ask for her home address. Now, she felt confident because there had been multiple emails back and forth, so she gave her mailing address. Then they sent a follow-up email saying, we've already sent the check. However, Johnny's now got some other activities. Uh, so he, he probably only needs to do about half as much of, of the tutoring time. Mm -hmm. So would you kindly deposit the check we sent you and send us the balance back? She got something in her mailbox that looked like it had been uh, processed at the US Post Office. Mm -hmm. She worked with detectives at Westwood and uh, I believe the Postal uh, Police. That was hand delivered. It was made to look like it had been mailed. And when they held up the check, the check looked legitimate. It was drawn on a bogus credit union out of Lowell, Mass. But she almost fell for it. And yeah. you know, she's in her late 30s. So it can happen to anybody, as you pointed out. Yeah. And all it takes is just those one little, those little details yeah. that you can pick up upon. And yeah. it's also the education that you guys are offering that can help people be aware of those, those minute details yeah. that might clue them in, yeah. which I think is very big. Yeah, and seniors, I always say to the seniors, Trust your gut. Trust your gut instinct. If it doesn't feel right, uh, we'd all love to hit the lottery. Mm -hmm. But if you get something in the mail that says you won the, you know, Publishers Clearinghouse, 
maybe you didn't. Yeah. You know, check it out. Don't don't rush to cash that check that they send you. Absolutely. Could be part of a scam. So in lieu of also talking about scams and stuff like that, there is also a lot of preventative programs that the sheriff's office offers for seniors in order to make sure that they're safe and healthy in, in times of an emergency. Um, one of the big things that has come out is the Are You OK program. Yeah. And I wonder if we can talk a little bit about what that is and what that looks like for someone who would sign up for it. Sure. So the Are You OK program is a great partnership between Norfolk County Sheriff's Office and Fallon Ambulance Service. And I should point out, Connor, it's free. It's a free program as are all the programs for seniors that we offer. Um, the way the Are You OK program works, it's simply a call goes out at the allotted time that the senior picks. It could be between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. And if you don't want it every morning, you just want it, say, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we, we can accommodate that. Mm -hmm. And the call goes out, and it, it is a little bit automated, and it just asks, you know, are you OK? If you are, hit one. If not, you know, press two or pick up the phone and say, I've got chest pains or I'm not feeling well, we can send help. What we ask the participants is a couple of things. Sign up, it's free, have a backup person, and then we work with you to know where uh, a key is hidden, so in case of an emergency. The reason that's important, I'll get to in a minute, but mm -hmm. um, let's say your grandmother were to sign up. We'll call her every day that she wants at 8 a.m. If she doesn't pick up, we're gonna call you and say, Connor, your grandmother didn't pick up the phone, and you may say, you know what, she should be there, there's a problem. Or you may say she forgot to tell you um, she's going downtown today, she's got dentist appointments and hair appointments. Sure. She, she just forgot to tell you, no problem. But if we call that person and they don't pick up and then we call their backup, designated backup, and, and they say they should be there, we'll try the house one more time on the phone. And if they don't pick up the phone, we're yeah, gonna work with local yeah, first responders, go do a wellness check. That's why we want to know where the key is, mm -hmm. because that wellness check, we don't want to break down anyone's door or cra crash through a window. If we needed to, we would, but um, we just want to go in and make sure everybody's okay. Yeah. And the Are You OK program's been around for a while, but in the 14 months that I've been sheriff, we've had seven saves. One woman actually had a life alert, um, but she had fallen. One hand was trapped in a way under her body. She couldn't reach the life alert button. The other wrist was broken. So um, we kept calling, she wasn't answering we were able to send out first responders to get her help. Another woman was in the tub and just lost the upper body strength to push herself up out of the tub. She was there for almost 11 hours. Uh, in that case, the police had to go in through the window. Wow, that's incredible. So it's really, you know, I like to think of the IUK program as an extra layer of protection for seniors. It's free um, and it's also peace of mind for their loved ones. So if it's, you know, my mom who's 93 or say your grandmom or a granddad, uh, you like to be there every day, but a lot of families, let's face it, they can't, or their sons or daughters have moved out of state, so nobody's able to check on them physically every day. But if there's at least that phone call every morning between 6 and 10 a.m., it's just another you know, uh, measure that t eases people's minds. Yeah, and I'm sure it's peace of mind. I mean, if you're, you know, I can look at my grandfather as a good example of someone who kind of just leaves his phone unplugged. So yeah. if his phone turns off, then you know he's not gonna be able to hear those calls, but it's better for, a, a person who's responding to know where that key is to be able to go into the house and verify that they're okay then the opposite situation of not having that safety and then something goes wrong yeah. so even yeah. if it's something that's very simple and easy to check up upon it's it's a much better as you said a peace of mind oh, in yeah. order to let people you know be safe yeah no it's a it's a great program so we encourage folks to sign up for the are you okay and it's a free program and do you know maybe how many people are signed up so far through the program? I think we've doubled the number since I've been sheriff. Mm -hmm. um, so we're well over, we're probably in the ballpark of about 150. Wow. Yeah. And that's not a lot for a big county like Norfolk County. Yeah. But it's really getting people, two things. It's getting the information out to the seniors. Mm -hmm. And then it's getting the seniors to get up the mindset that um, they're a senior. And they may need this program because my mom, now she's 93, but up into her 80s, she was the typical person that would say, that's for old people. Yep. I don't need that. That's the biggest part is kind of just yeah. convincing people that they might need the help. They just it's might. a pride thing. It, you know, they, they want to feel the independence. Absolutely. And, and sometimes it's hard to tell them that. And, and my siblings would kill me for saying this, but uh, you know, I'm the youngest of 10. My older siblings, uh, the baby boomers, they're retiring now, thousands of them every day across the country, and they want to live more independently at home longer. These kinds of programs help you do that. Stay in your own home as long as you can. But um, you know, seniors have to realize that you know, someone as young as you and I, Connor, or somebody their age can slip and fall. And most accidents at home happen in the bathtub and shower. Mm -hmm. So if you're there and you're hurt, you've hit your head, you, know, you could be there for hours if nobody knows 
you know, that's why these calls are so important. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we also wanted to talk a little bit about the Files of Life and also the Yellow Dot program. Yeah. And I wanted to talk about both of them kind of simultaneously because they, f they fulfill the same type of function. Yeah. And I wanted to go over a little bit about what those are and how people can benefit from having these available to them. Sure, and, and I see you've actually got, uh, if I can hold yeah, one up there. absolutely. The, uh, the File for Life. This is, this is probably one of the neatest little programs that we've got at the Norfolk County Sheriff's Office. Uh, you'll notice there's a little magnet on the back here. That goes right on the refrigerator. So first responders are trained to look for this if they come to the, if there's a 911 call and they go to your house, mm -hmm. um, they know to look for this right away. This will tell them who you are, what medicines and what dosage you're on, uh, your primary care physician, uh, your emergency contact person. Uh, it tells them everything about you. If there's any um, implants or recent surgeries, um, medicines that you're allergic to, all that uh, pertinent medical information in one handy little pouch and again, it goes right up in the refrigerator so that if a, a police officer, firefighter, or EMT has to come to your home and you're incapacitated and can't speak for yourself, this will speak for you. And that's a big thing as well because when someone is brought into the hospital, one of the, I mean, apart from asking who this person is, the second question they're going to ask is, what are the medications they're on? That's right. Make sure there's no conflicts, there's no reactions to anything that's going on. Yeah. So that's hugely helpful. That's right. Yeah. And it, Norfolk County is a fairly diverse county with multiple languages spoken. So if English is not your primary language, but you could have somebody help you fill this out in English, that's great. That way, you know, you could be incapacitated or there may be a language barrier with the first responder. So this is critically important information. And again, another free program, um, and it ties nicely into the Yellow Dot program. Mm -hmm. um, basically, all the information that's in that file for life goes in your glove box. So think of the Yellow Dot program as a way of alerting those first responders, if there's a motor vehicle crash, God forbid, or you're incapacitated and uh, not able to speak for yourself in a vehicle, they'll look to see, to see on the, uh, the driver's side rear window, just a yellow dot, and uh, this program tells that first responder, look in the glove box. They can tell if you were driving the car, Connor, or are you the person who's the passenger, because we have your picture right on that packet. So. Uh, this one's got a mugshot of one of our, <laughs> our uh, deputy sheriffs, Joe Canavan, a uh, great mugshot of Joe. And this basically has all the same information as the file for life, all that important medical information in the glove box. So now, again, if, if you're rendered unconscious and you can't talk to that ambulance driver to say, here's what's wrong with me or here's what my name is or, by the way, I have allergies to certain medicines, all your information's right there Excellent. in one neat pouch. So uh, that one, <coughs> excuse me, that one we do require folks to take a, a picture. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's all free. So uh, we actually have a camera now where we can bring out to the Council on Aging and take the photo of the participant right there. And I was talking to your staff member, Joe, who said that it's done just that day. So Absolutely. you'll be able to put the picture on, you'll be able to take it with you and, go. and get started. And we've actually gone out to uh, senior centers and people say to myself and uh, Deputy Sheriff Canavan, hey, if you get any more of those yellow stickers because I had a crack in my windshield, mm -hmm. we'll accommodate them. Whatever happens, if they get a new vehicle, we'll accommodate them. Absolutely. And could you tell us a little bit about like how many seniors have signed up for this program, how effective it's been? That one I think is a couple of hundred. Okay. That one's very effective and very popular. I'd say most of the Council on Aging uh, visits that we've done, that's the number one, people, uh, uh, number one program that people ask for. Uh, because again, people are independent and they're still driving their cars longer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know, I met a lady the other day, she was in her 90s, same age as my mom, she's still driving around. Yeah. Um, which, God bless her, that's great. Yeah, I love that independence and I, I love I, it. I, I hope like that people can I hope try we get there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then some of those other programs um, uh, for seniors and for youth, we have them available online. So if people want to go online and check out the Norfolk County uh, Sheriff's Office website, it'll give you the phone numbers to sign up, it'll give you information online to sign up. And then again, if you have any other questions, uh, Deputy Sheriff Canavan's our guy for all these outreach programs. Um, the one on the youth, if, if we have time, yes. um, <clears throat> this Leadership Academy is a brain tree. And what it does, for one week, we'll have young people come in and they do this um, kind of a self-esteem building, peer leadership, anti-bullying program. They all sign up thinking they're gonna do this great ropes course, and that's the draw, mm -hmm. that's kind of the hook. They, they think it's a great, fun, outdoor activity, which it is. But besides doing the ropes course and the obstacle courses, they're learning about themselves, they're making new friends, coming out of their shell, and building that, that self-confidence, self-awareness, and they learn how to deal with peer pressure and bullying. That's rampant still. Um, and with cell phones now, 
uh, cyberbullying is, is an epidemic uh, in, in all of our schools, even, even in the younger ages, third, fourth, fifth grade. So at the end of the week, we give them a certificate for their completion, and we have mom, dad, grandparents there. We do a little pizza party, and we, we have the kids talk about what, we, what were the highlights of the week, and I give a, a quick speech, and we get people on their way. But as I intermingle with the moms and dads and the grandparents, the number one takeaway for this Leadership Academy is that we talked about bullying. Mm -hmm. Parents love it because it's, it, it's almost, there's still a stigma. If your child's being bullied, parents don't talk about it. It's almost like they're ashamed to say that their child was bullied. Or it could be hard it's to terrible. talk about too. It's a difficult subject to kind of very bring hurtful, up. Yeah. Very hurtful, very hurtful. So this kind of draws kids out, gets them talking, and um, we have count camp counselors that are a little bit older. They're about you know college freshman, college sophomore age, and they love them. The kids look up to them and bond with them. And sometimes that child who's you know, 10, 11, 12 will open up to that sophomore college and say, you know what, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then you know, we can get that information uh, back to the appropriate adults to deal with it. So it's a great program. That one is not free. <laughs> uh, we do have some overhead to run that, and, uh, but it's, it's a great bargain. It's about $175 for a full week, which is terrific. I mean, that's a value. And my hope, Connor, is to take that program, which is now based in Braintree, and bring it someplace out towards, say, you know, like a Franklin, mm -hmm. so that we're covering Norfolk County completely. Uh, right now, most of our young people that sign up for the Leadership Academy, I'd say they're from Holbrook, Braintree, Weymouth, Quincy. We don't see a lot of kids from, you know, Canton or Westwood or Dedham, or Walpole for that matter. So if we could replicate this program, which was started by my predecessor and I continued, I'd like to duplicate it somewhere towards the Franklin or Foxboro, someplace that's easily accessible so that you know more of our kids in the county uh, can participate. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you notice that with this youth program that there's more youth involvement with the Sheriff's Office? Do you see that absolutely. these kids are coming back and potentially being those camp counselors as you mentioned? They absolutely do. They, they come to us as, as uh, actually campers, mm -hmm. then they graduate to become counselors, and many of them want to go into careers in law enforcement. Wow. So it's, it's been terrific. Good recruiting you know, over drive the years. It's a great <laughs> recruiting drive. And, and I'm always shocked by the people I meet just as I'm out and about through Norfolk County, and they'll come up and they'll say, hey, Sheriff, I just want to tell you that Leadership Academy in Braintree, terrific. My child, my son, my daughter loved it. So it's kind of like the highlight of their summer. Uh, so that's why it's so important. So all the things we do, whether they're programs to rehabilitate the inmates on the inside or the outward facing programs, it all ties together, mm -hmm. right? We're trying to make a safer community for all of us. Absolutely. Um, so talking a little bit about Westwood and talking a little bit about some of the programs, some of the involvement. Um, when we were speaking before, we were talking about a lot of involvement with the Council on Aging, a lot of Fox Hill Village, um, a lot of the events that are attended, such as like Westwood Day. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about those, the attendance there and some of the good benefits that come out of being, oh, sure. the, as you mentioned, forward facing and, and being in the public eye about those types of things. So probably the best vehicle that we have is our mobile command center. It is a draw, and we have uh, adults and we have children that will see our Norfolk County Sheriff's Mobile Command Center, and we open it up, and we'll bring it to you know Touch a Truck Days or Westwood Day, for example. And we just did it this past year up at um, up at Westwood High School. Mm -hmm. We were over by the tennis courts, and everyone's drawn to it. They want to come in and see what it's all about and take a quick little tour. And when they come in, they start to interface with our corrections officers and our deputy sheriffs, and they learn more about what we do. And we, you know, we bring some information and we have a tent set up so they could come over and, and um, meet some of our folks. And one of our very own, Lieutenant Kelly Jenks is a uh, fellow Westwood uh, Wolverine person. Uh, she's a resident. So um, Kelly usually comes with us. And um, it, it's great because people don't know exactly what a sheriff does other than what they may have seen in the movies mm -hmm. or the old notion that the sheriff was just the jailer. You just locked up the bad guys and that was it. Yeah. You know, make them do the time for their crime. Now we still do that, of course. People still do the time for their crime and they're being punished. But we believe in rehabilitation. So we try to educate people that the folks that are in our care and custody today are coming back out to the supermarkets and coffee shops to, that you all frequent tomorrow. They are going to get out. Mm -hmm. The longest somebody's gonna stay is maybe two and a half years. The average stay right now um, for somebody up at the House Corrections, probably under 50 days. So we have a short window of opportunity to get them in, try to get them on the path to uh, sobriety, get them clean and sober, make sure they've got a high school equivalency, get them well on their way, um, or you know, do they have a skill set? Um, 
Can they paint? Uh, are they any good in culinary arts? So in that small amount of time that somebody's in our care and custody, we're trying to fix them. I like to say we're fixing broken people, and it's good for all of us because they are coming back out to our communities. Um, so they could be our neighbors down the road. So uh, it's important to do these kinds of things and these outward facing programs and opportunities like Westwood Day. Uh, that gives us the opportunity to interface with the public and bring them up to speed on all the programs we're doing and the integral role we play in public safety. Absolutely. Do you think, because we've talked about a, a very large swath of what the Sheriff's Office does, any of the programs that we didn't highlight, any of the things that we didn't really talk about, uh, take the opportunity to kind of talk sure. about anything that you think, if I were to interpret what a Norfolk Sheriff's Office does, that it's not necessarily something that would be obvious to talk about. Sure. So uh, one sad fact is that we house uh, a lot of men who are charged with uh, ab abuse of their partners, right? So domestic violence is still a very ugly epidemic, and a lot of people don't talk about that either. Uh, we're partnering now with Dove, Domestic Violence Ended, and we're trying to have them, Dove, come up and look at our robust programming and even enhance that for our offenders so that they can learn and straighten themselves out, take anger management classes, et cetera. But in coming days, what we want to do is uh, Dover County Sheriff's Office is hoping to partner with Lieutenant Governor Polito as well as Dove and get out to our schools more often because uh, healthy relationships, those are things that we don't talk about. I've got two, two teenage daughters and sometimes, you know, they won't tell me, you know, whether they got a crush on somebody or they're dating. It's I, hard to get the time of day sometimes. Yeah, you can barely <laughs> get the time of day. I know they're going to the prom because they've talked to me about buying prom dresses, but this is a critically important subject. And the more we can get out to the schools and in uh, junior high and high school and talk to the boys and girls about what is a healthy relationship, what is acceptable. Um, there's, a, there's a great TV commercial running now and it's hashtag that's not love. It, it's been all, all over the airwaves. It's really an important message because it shows somebody trying to control their partner with their cell phone, you know, texting them all the time, wanting to know where they are, demanding that they have their location um, available and visible. All of these types of um, techniques are really control and abusive and manipulative, and then it can lead to physical abuse. So um, it's really an important thing. Folks don't often think of the, the sheriff uh, or the sheriff's office as more than the person uh, or, or the entity that incarcerates the offenders. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do take the abusers into our custody and we try to straighten them out, but we're trying to get these important messages out to our kids and into our community at large so that we can shine a spotlight on this and hopefully end domestic violence. And that big youth push is obviously a, a huge component to it, as you said. And oh, huge, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, if we can, you know, I if we can get to the, these young men and women um, and we can educate them, they, they'll, they'll be better functioning adults and they can have healthy relationships. The last thing I'll say, Connor, and this is an open invitation to you uh, and your camera crew if they want to, is come take a tour. Uh, so if anyone at home that's watching wants to get their, um, their retired men's group, uh, the, the uh, senior citizens groups, their schools, their high schools, if they want to come up and take a tour of the jail, We'd love to show you around. Absolutely. We just got new equipment to be able to kind of go, go walking site. around and everything like that. Be so great. we'll be happy to put it to good use. Awesome. Jerry, thank you very much. Connor, again. thanks so much. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. We'd like to thank Sheriff McDermott for taking the time to speak with us today. We'd like to also thank Jill Canavan, Director of Senior Programs, and all the Sheriff's staff for being in contact with us and allowing for this interview. For interested parties who want to learn more about the senior programs, the number for the Sheriff's Office is 781-329-3705, or you can go to NorfolkSheriff.com. Thank you for tuning in.